What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, here for a, another episode of Storytime with Treeb. It's been a minute since we've uploaded a Storytime with Treeb. I think it's been about a month at this point uh, since I told my last story. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's the new evolution of Treeb. There's going to be a lot of different videos coming your way, a lot of different topics, not all just football related. Everything happens for a reason. There's going to be a lot of cool stuff. Me and Bryce are going to be getting a full-time podcast here soon. I'm trying to get the first episode out this Saturday. Um, it's going to be called 15 Years of BS because me and him have been friends for 15 years. And we have a lot of stories between the two of us. And hopefully you guys do enjoy that. But today what the story is going to be is something that I've, I've touched on a little bit. I... Uh, when it first happened, I did talk about it just a little bit, but today I'm going to go a little bit more in depth. Now, if you're new to the channel and you weren't here uh, during the summer of last year, your boy had a seizure while at the wheel. Now, this is one of my favorite stories to tell, I'm not going to lie, just because, uh, I mean, it's an experience and I've never experienced anything like that. I've never been in an ambulance, I've never been to the hospital, you know, I don't have any allergies that prevent me from eating things so I have an allergic reaction so I go to to the hospital you know I've you know I've been good you know I've been blessed with good health but there is this story that really changed my life um, and it was my seizure so ladies and gentlemen sit back relax grab your coffee grab your popcorn grab your vapes because we are going in it is story time with Treeb and this is what happened when I had a seizure? So in order for y'all to understand this story, we're going to take you back to the day before my seizure. The seizure happened September 1st of 2018. So just about five months ago is when this seizure went down. Now, prior to that, it was the last day of August. And I was covering my first high school football game for the... Uh, for the newspaper I work with here at the uh, at the Lewiston Tribune, and uh, I typed all that up, and you know it was stressful. I almost didn't meet deadline. I think I got done at like 11:05, and the deadline was like 11:10, like my editor said, or something like that. So you know I was stressed out about that. Uh, I got in the paper, everything was good. You know I got my critiques, got everything, and uh, I went home. So I went home. I don't get off work until about roughly 12:30 every night. Um, but this time I came home a little later. It was like 1, 1 1.15. And so, uh, I play some video games. Because I can't, I'm one of those people that when I get home, I can't just go to bed. You know, I have to, I have to relax. I have to play a couple of games of NBA 2K. I gotta play some games of Madden. You know, all that stuff. You know, I gotta play my video games. I gotta watch something on TV. You know, I can't just go to bed as soon as I get home from work. So, I was up until about 4 or 5 in the morning that night. Just playing video games, watching Netflix, you know. So it's nothing new. That's some, that's stuff that just happens every night almost. And then I go to bed, and I usually I because my work schedule's so fucked, you know. I don't get up ever until about one o'clock. You know that's why these videos come out at around three o'clock. I just get up, I talk to you guys, and you know we put the videos out. But you know for some reason on September first of two thousand and eighteen, I thought that. I had to get up at 10 a.m., so it was like five hours of sleep, five, four hours of sleep. I couldn't go back to bed after, like, I was up at 10 a.m., Bailey was up, we were fucking around, you know, talking, and I was like, man, I'm just gonna get up, you know, I have no reason not to, you know, I'm awake, let's just get up. So, the whole plan was, was that, uh, this was actually the day that we, we were gonna have a big party at Colton's house, uh, shout out to Colton if you're watching this, by the way. We were supposed to have a big party at Colton's house, everybody was supposed to show up, and we are supposed to do our fantasy draft. That same day at Colton's house on uh, ESPN. So I get up early, 10 a.m. I'm talking to Bailey, blah, blah, blah. We're hungry. We don't really have any food at the house. I was like, how about I go pick up some breakfast, you know, because I'm a nice boyfriend and I like to go out to eat. So I'm like, you know what? Yeah, let's go get breakfast. So we have this little diner bait uh, diner place here called the bait shop. Um, and I didn't want to change. I didn't want to shower right away. So I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to go pick it up, take it home, eat here. And then figure out what we're going to do for the rest of the day after that. So, I get dressed. You know, I throw stuff on. I get in the car. I'm like, alright, I'm going to go pick it up. I'll see you when I get back. See you later. So, 
what I do is I hop on my whip, my 1990 Mazda 626. If you're wondering what old Tree from Tree Talks drives, it's not the most luxurious vehicle. It's kind of a shit box, but you know, it's my shit box. You know, if you have a shit car, you're not going to admit it's a shit car to anybody else. Anyway, so I hop in the whip and I'm like, all right, we're going to go and I'm going to go get you some breakfast. So Bailey didn't come with me. I was like, I'm going to go. I can pick it up and stay here. I'll be back five minutes. So we hop in the whip and when I start driving, you know, there's there's shortcuts for people to get anywhere they need to go. So either when you're going down this road, you can go straight and you can go down to this light, but this light for some reason just takes millenniums. Or you can just cut through the Kmart parking lot and you're already up that hill and you're fine. You know, you're ready to go. That light also takes millenniums. So what I decided to do is I was like, fuck it. I'm going to cut through the Kmart parking lot. I do that like every day. So I was like, I'm going to cut through here, get to the stoplight, first car in line. So I'm sitting there, first car in line. I'm listening to YG because that's that's when his uh when Stay Dangerous first came out. So I was just, I was listening to a lot of YG at the time. So I was listening to some YG. I was just chilling at the stoplight, and then bam, I just black out. Like it's I have no okay. And it was, this was probably more important to know at the beginning. I have. And I, and I kind of did. I have absolutely no history of seizures. I have no health problems whatsoever. This is why it was just so random. Like, I have no idea why or how, you know, this seizure came about. So, you know, if you're going to leave that comment down below, like, well, how, why'd you end up having a seizure? How'd you have a seizure? So I have some possible reasons why. So stay tuned until the end to uh, figure that one out. But anyway, so I black out. You know, when you're black out, you're not thinking anything. You're just, you're just done. You know, like there's nothing, there's nothing you can do. You're blacked out. And then, you know, I somewhat wake up. I look and there's this big ass fucking EMT guy from the ambulance, you know, at my, at my uh, door. And I was like, is everything okay? We're good. And he's like, are you okay? And I'm like, what do you mean? And he said, uh, we think you just had a seizure. And I'm like, what? I had a seizure? And, you know, I, I didn't believe it at the time because I was like, I felt like I was still at the stoplight. Like, I didn't feel like anything happened. You know, I just, my brain shut down. Everything shut down. It was done. You know, and I was, and I was at the wheel, at a stoplight. <laughs> See, and this is the thing. I thank God every day. I literally do. That when I had this seizure, if it was a half a second sooner, half a second later when I had this seizure and that light turned green, I'd be driving, I'd have a seizure, I'd run into somebody, I'd run into a pool, I'd run into another car. You know, bad things would have happened if I wasn't at the stoplight. So, thankfully, I was at that stoplight and I didn't run into anything. You know, I was pressed on the brake, I was at a full stop, I just had a flailing bad seizure at a stoplight exiting the Kmart parking lot, front of the line. So, anyway, going back to when I saw the EMT, the EMT is like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah. I was like, my shoulder hurts. So that was the other thing. When I had my seizure, I dislocated my shoulder. And let me tell you what, you know, those people, if you stay up, like if you are awake when those people pop your shoulder back into place, or you've had a separated shoulder and you just think nothing of it, props to you, man, because that was the most pain I have ever been in was when I had that dislocated shoulder. Like, I swear to God, I've never broken a bone. I've fucked around with my ankle a couple of times. And my the same shoulder that I fucked up has been, you know, kind of bugging, like, ever since I was in high school. But I've never been in that much pain before. I was just like, oh, my God, my shoulder hurts. I was saying, fuck, 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 fuck in the ambulance. And when I got to the hospital, you know, they even, like, wrote on the board, like, the amount of times I said fuck while I was in the hospital. But anyway, so the AMT, he goes, he's like, did you okay? And I was like, what day is it? And like that, because I was confused, because when I when I woke up and I seen him, I felt like I was sleeping for like, it for a whole nine hours, like rest, you know, and like I was probably out for about 10 minutes, which is something that I've always kind of wanted to know. I never asked because like, I wonder how long it took for the cars behind me to realize that I was having a seizure, you know, in order to get out of their car and say, hey, let's call 911, this kid's having a seizure, you know, I've always been kind of wondering about that, but, um, so he goes, 
yeah, you, you're going to have to come into the ambulance with me. And I literally, I could have walked. Like, my legs weren't necessarily, like, broken. But he's like, come lay on this gurney. Come lay on this stretcher. We're going to roll you into the ambulance. And I was like, okay. And, you know, I'm scared. I'm just listen, I'm listening to what they have to tell me. And it's at a busy-ass intersection. So this whole intersection shut off. And, like, I just remember there's, like, police stands that, like, were making sure no one was coming in on this busy-ass road. And I was just like... Damn, dude, I shut down this whole fucking busy-ass street because I had a seizure. Anyway, so I'm in the ambulance. I'm in the stretcher or whatever, the gurney, and they're asking me all sorts of questions, you know, medical history, all that. And, you know, I was just shook because I was like, how the fuck do I have a seizure if I don't even have anything wrong with me? You know, like, I just I didn't understand that. And though, and then, so we go to the hospital. I'm at the hospital. You know, I'm sitting there, you know, I'm getting all these tests done. Uh, I got a CAT scan and stuff. I got some x-rays for my shoulder, um, you know, and I and I call Bailey. And, you know, Bailey is shook up about it. Bailey is, like, like crying. And, she, you know, she came to the hospital. And then my parents came to the hospital. Uh, I'll never forget, and my, my, my good friends, uh, who was there, it was Colton, shouts Colton, Mike, shouts Mike, and Barnage, shouts Barnage. Those guys came and see me at the hospital. They didn't come in and see me. But my dad seen him. And, you know, my dad sometimes, you know, he's a little standoffish. It's kind of funny. I just remember he and my friends telling me. They came up and was like, what did, what did Trevin drink last night? How fucked up did he get? You know, he thought that I was I had, like, alcohol poisoning or something. Like, even though I'm sure Bailey told him I had a seizure. But, you know, my dad was just all pissed off at my friends because they thought that they got me all drunk or something. But, you know, the night before I was covering a football game. I wasn't even drinking. So, you know, that was just. That, that, that story is always kind of funny to me, but uh, so we come in, I get all these tests done, and what it comes up is I have a dislocated shoulder, and they they talk to me a little bit about my seizure and what might have happened. They say that like my threshold for seizures is lower than the average person, um, and they said it was weird. They're like your threshold is lower for the than the average person's, but you're still more prone to get them. But you won't get them that often, or you won't get them often. Like, this might be the only seizure you'll ever have in your entire life. And it's like, this is fucked up how this shit works, how seizures work. Because you could literally just have one in your lifetime, and that's it. And, like, I would imagine having a seizure, like, in a house probably is not as bad. I think the reason that my seizure felt as bad, and it was bad, was because I was in a vehicle. And I was driving, you know. Like, that, that stuff made it worse so I, I was like okay that's fine and you know and she sits down she tells me and she's like you got a lot of tongue abrasions on your tongue you know you probably bit the shit out of your tongue you know that's common for people that have seizures so she sits me down and she's like all right here's the deal you can't drive for six months i'm like what i can't drive for six months i mean at the time i was pissed and you know it kind of made sense it's like you just had a seizure driving you probably should lay off the wheel for a while and i did i didn't lay off for the whole six months but i definitely did do a couple of months of no driving but you know it sucks you know when you have two jobs and you know you do this and you can't and you're not on your own schedule and you're on somebody else's schedule that's taking you places that fucks with you you know that's not your schedule you know you got to go out there and do your own thing so after about three months i was like you know what fuck it i'm gonna drive and i'm gonna take care of myself so i haven't even gotten to the biggest kick in the ass of this whole experience the whole experience the whole kick in the ass the big thing was as so i go to the hospital my parents are telling me this like the whole week which is just so ironic you know and it sucks because you know it fucked me at the end but um they're like, Trevin, listen, we're not going to have health insurance in a week. So, you know, be safe. <laughs> like, like, don't don't fuck around and do that. Because my mom just quit her job at the school district. And that's where we were on a health insurance. So we're waiting to get all my dad's health insurance, you know. So we're waiting for that. And then, boom, I have a seizure. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, it's not the end of the week yet. We probably still have health insurance. My parents come in. You literally just had to have the seizure the day we ran out of our health insurance. My jaw hit the fucking floor. And the big thing was, was that if I had still been living with my parents at the time, they probably would have helped me financially. Um, but I wasn't. So all that kind of fell to me. So I had the seizure. I didn't have health insurance. I got billed. You know, and like that, 
I was moved out. I moved out in July 1st. July, I was moved out for two months. Just about two months I've been moved out. And I already just get hit with this seizure and hit with all these bills, you know? And it, it was crazy, you know? I, I was just thinking to myself, fuck, how am I going to get these paid? How am I going to get these done? And it was all in my mind, you know, that this part, this part of the story is, you know, it's over with the seizure. This is more of kind of a, you know, positive, positive vibe, positive thinking. So what happened was, was I got a $6,887 bill from the hospital. I got a $2,000 bill for the cat scan or something. And then I got like a $600 bill for the ambulance ride. And then I got a uh, $120 bill for popping my shoulder back into place. So Fucking, I had about $8,000 worth of bills. Now, instead of just paying them off or going to the hospital and trying to write them off like a smart individual should do, I had the mind state of, fuck, fuck, I can't believe I fucked up this bad. The world is out to get me. You know, I can't pay these. You know, I'm just going to, I'm going to wait until the last possible second. And I did do that. I did do that with a lot of my bills, almost all of them. You know, I just sat on them. I was just like, I can't pay these. What am I going to do? You know, and so what happened was, was I, I'd complain about it a lot to my friends. And then my buddy Mike, who was at the hospital, set up a GoFundMe for me for my hospital bills. And that, that just warmed my heart. And the, the fact that people donated, so many people donated, you know, that also just warmed my heart. So, you know, I don't remember the total amount that we ended up getting. I think it was like 700 roughly roughly around 700 bucks. So, you know, that didn't pay off near all the bills, but that helped out a lot in paying off some of the littler bills. And, uh, you know, I still had the big one. So what I did was, was I got off my ass. I went to the hospital. I showed my W-2s, my income and stuff. And I told them straight up, I can't pay this. So what they did was they wrote it off. And you have no idea how, how stupid that made me feel in the head and how much of a weight that was lifted off my shoulders. Because in my head, I was like, Trevin, you could have done this literally the day you got the bill and you would have never had to worry about it again. But you know what you do? You fucking you sit back, you relaxed, you didn't and you waited, you waited, you waited until it was just about to go to collection. And you're like, hey, yeah, I'm not going to pay that. So, you know, it, I was blessed in the fact that, you know, they were able to write that off for me. I really do appreciate that. And uh, also with my other two thousand dollar bill, uh, that's another one I've been putting off a lot until it got to collection almost got to collection and you know that got waved off too so right now i'm really only paying uh i still have to pay my my shoulder pop-in fee and then i have to pay uh the ambulance bill i pay i pay monthly by that uh for that bill so you know all those bills are kind of taken care of at that point so the main point i'm getting at this is you are not gonna succeed at anything if you just keep thinking oh the world's out to get me woe is me I'm in such a low place in my life, like no one's ever going to want to help me, uh, you know, and you're complaining, you're feeling sorry for yourself, quit fucking feeling sorry for yourself, do you know how many more people have it worse than you, like it, it hurts me inside to see people complain and be like, the world's out to get me, I can't do this, I can't do that, my, my back hurts, I can't work, you know, literally the only thing that, that works in life is if you have consistency and um, hard work. Hard work and consistency. That's all you have to do to be successful at anything you do. Let's talk about YouTube. My YouTube videos, they're not necessarily the highest of quality, but I put videos out five, six days a week. People like what I have to say. I get more subscribers. Hell, this year alone, I gained 400 subscribers, you know, and that's awesome. And that's just from hard work and determination. Same thing at a job, you know. If you're at a job, you work hard, you get a raise, you know, and you, you're consistent. You keep coming, you keep coming, you keep coming, and you do it. You do your work, you know, you do what you're told. And that was the same thing with the bills was that I had the mentality, man, woe is me. The world's against me. I can't pay these. I don't make enough money. You know, if you have those certain types of bills and you don't make enough money, they will help you out and they will write it off for you. At least the bigger bills. You know, some of them you're going to have to set up payment plans and just get it done. But, and like, it's the same thing for people that just don't want to get a job, you know, and they're just like, oh, man, I'm not cut out. I smoke weed. Stop fucking smoking weed then. 
If you really want to get a good job and the thing that's holding you back is the fact that you're smoking weed and you can't pass a drug test, stop fucking smoking weed. Stop smoking weed and fucking go and get a good job and make yourself happy. Like, don't do not do things for other people. Do things for yourself. Like, I, I'm in a different situation where I have a love of my life and, you know, everything I do, is it, it affects me and her. But, you know, if you're out on your alone and you're just, woe is me, I can't do anything, do something for yourself. Because once you better yourself, you will feel so good. 100% so better. You will feel better about yourself, ladies and gentlemen. And that was some story time with Treep talking about my seizure. A little bit of a motivational speech at the end as well. What would you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Instagram, at Trayvon Pixley. And if you're feeling oh so generous, you can go ahead and donate on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Troop Talks. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new videos on this channel five days a week. Ain't nobody at work me. Them is just straight facts. Ladies and gentlemen, more new content on the way. Have a terrific day.